um, just so you guys know, our our art uh, supplies for today, uh, well, we're going to be doing a, a crayon wax resist with watercolor. And you know, you guys know how much I love the white crayons. So um, go ahead and grab your watercolors, your water, your napkins, your brush of choice. Now, I like to use um, this guy right here. Um, he's going to be a round brush. It happens to be a size eight, but you know, whatever's comfortable for you. Um, feel free to try out a few different ones. If you happen to have a flat brush, that's totally okay too. If you want, I can show you how to use that too. Um, but we're going to do something, something very easy today. We're going to use our crayons to create any sort of pattern we want. And we're going to allow the watercolors um, to move along with the water. I'll be applying water first before I apply any colors. And then we'll allow the water to do what it wants to do. It's gonna travel throughout all of these little pools that we created, these little dams actually with the, the wax. Um, and so we can guide it along that way. So um, I'm gonna be using three colors. However, I'm going to be mixing some of these colors together, just so you know. Um, oh, yes. Brandy says, um, yes, you can use yellow. Absolutely. If you don't have any white, um, that's totally fine. You can use a light colored crayon, but lavender. Um, I don't know. I think cornflower is a color. That's a really pretty color, whatever light color you can use. Um, and I, I only say that because it makes for the most dramatic effect if you use a light color. But if you want to get experimental, totally fine as well. We're going to be allowing um, the colors to do what they're going to do, but we are going to guide them, but just a little bit. Um, we're going to guide them not too, too much. Um, like I mentioned with the crayons, we're going to create our, our, our dam, so to speak, like it's, you know, like beaver dam, you know, think of that. It's going to trap the water in certain spots, and then we'll be able to use our paintbrush to move the water and move the color in different spots. So we'll be starting on one end and just sort of um, uh, making our way up. You can go up as far as you want with your color before you jump into the next color or perhaps even the next spot. Um, as far as order of operations are concerned, I'm pretty sure I started here with this one. I wanted a, a, a not so bright um, blue here. So I think I added a little bit of, of orange to my blue to create a muted color, but you don't have to do that. Okay. Mind you, you don't have to mix crazy colors like this. What, what and then happens, what happens with the um, mixing orange and blue? Does it make brown? You know, where is that? Like on the, yeah. uh, the color it, thing? Yeah. So basically orange and blue are two opposites on the color wheel. So if you mix them, you get brown. But in this case, it's a balancing act. It's a matter of how much orange are you going to put into your blue so that it doesn't create brown. It just makes it um, uh, less bright. Um, that's really the word. It's just less bright. Uh, Tony asks a, a, a great question earlier. Can you use white oil pastels if you don't have a white crayon? And the answer is yes. However, I would use a brush that you don't, uh, that you aren't in love with. Use a brush that you don't mind getting um, oily residue on because it'll, it'll get, it'll catch the oil onto the brush. So just keep that in mind. But other than that, it works just the same. Spirals. I want you guys to go crazy. I have um, large spirals and then I also have some dots in between. So of course, we're not going to be able to see these things very well, if, if at all, really. So this is why I chose spirals because they're very easy. You don't really need to concentrate with them. You can overlap them. I recommend pressing down hard. Um, I can see some of it, especially, especially if I move my head a certain way, um, the light catches it a certain way. So I can see it. The whole idea behind this painting is that it's supposed to be stress-free, ish. There's always an ish in there, right? There's always a kind of, like a maybe. 
maybe I'll be stress free. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's hard to see your. Um... It is. It is. Yeah. It's very difficult to see it, but trust me, they they look very much like these spirals. So I'll just leave these right here. And um, something I'll do right now in a moment is I'll I'll move my picture. Uh, this this one, the one I'm working on. I can see my marks in the light a little bit. Can't see it like that, but yeah. I am gonna wanna add some spirals. I'm sorry, yeah. some dots. If you like turn it at an angle, I can kind of see. Yeah, like I can turn it up like this and I can add my dots. It's kind of one of those things you have to move around. I can see some. And honestly, you don't have to have the dots. I I only put the dots there because I wanted something a little bit extra, you know, something that's not just spirals. I do encourage you guys, um, if you happen to finish this picture, maybe, you know, try out different um, different types of patterns. It's a nice little puzzle to give yourself um, drawing when you can't really see what you're drawing. Always remember that you can always start over too. Now, are we ready for, for some color? Yep. Okay, I, I had to make sure I, I grabbed a the page that I was working on and not a blank page. Okay. So we're going to start off purely with water. So again, you're not really going to see very much. I just want you to really pull that water. If you think it's too much, it's probably perfect. I really want a lot of water. I'm just, I'm just able to scoop some up with my, with my paintbrush. And I'm mostly sticking to one spot. I just chose the corner just because that's what I did last time. I'll be able to move up in a, other directions after this, this spot. Once you've got that water spread around go for your first color i'm just gonna go for plain old purple not the mixed one just the one that i used in order to mix the complicated one i've got it let me turn this around so you can see it I'm gonna mix it around just like so and I'm going to tap on the most watery areas. Tap and let those little bits of water take the color away. Now, of course, I am going to be able to um, move my, like actually spread it without tapping it in a moment, but I, I really want to enjoy this moment. I really love looking at how the water carries the color away. And you can get that by by tapping. There we go. Now, if you are ready to actually spread it and actually do something like this, I actually recommend grabbing water first. So just tapping it in water, even though I have paint on my brush and then spreading it outwards. Go all over every corner, edge to edge, as far as you'd like. That water is going to dilute it. And that diluting is something that we want if we want some areas to blend like this area, that water is really the key to all this blending. 
Now, feel free to go right back into some of your spots here and reapply purple. Oh, well, your color, not purple. Um, I'm using purple. Reapply it to your areas that have the most water. Just, you know, more tapping motions. Watch that color go. Speaking of frozen, let it go, that song. <laughs> I swear that song was in my head for a week straight. <laughs> it must have been a week. It drove me crazy. I do like that song, but I, I heard it enough when I was teaching kids uh, before the pandemic. Now I want to sing it. <laughs> let it go sorry guys <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm as I'm spreading outward I am still spreading my water and I'm going to go ahead and grab my complicated purple over here because you know maybe you guys can see it a little bit better now it probably looks a little similar to the actual purple but I promise it's different. Maybe if I add a little more of that uh, orange to it, just a little bit. Now we don't really want to see too many of these hard lines. So again, that water is going to be key to spreading the water, spreading the pigment. And if you need a pause to create more color, then go ahead and do so. I'm only saying that because I'm finally running out of my color. So I'm making more. You can see it just on the side here, a little bit of that orange and I grabbed some of the purple just now. I'm mixing it, I'm scraping off as much of this paint as I can rinsing it before I dip it back into my paint pigment. And then continuing. Now, the, I wanna say um, my art terminology is coming back to me now, finally. Um, the addition of uh, opposites colors or the, the mixing of opposite colors um, really makes the color turn um, more towards neutral, more towards a neutral tone. So it's, it's really not nearly as bright. It's more, it's much more neutral. It's much more um, of a complex color. This is how you can create shadows sometimes if you mix opposite colors together. Trying to think of other examples right now. Really, these colors help to lift and, um, yeah, basically lift other colors and make them brighter sometimes. There we go. Now you guys can see the difference between the two. Now, once you guys are ready, um, you guys can, can move on to the next color if you'd like. Um, once again, start off by adding just the water. So because this area is still pretty wet, I'm gonna go ahead and start here. I'm gonna add just my water to the mix. Perhaps I want fuchsia on this side. Gonna make sure I have a lot of water here. And I'm even gonna start to blend this complicated purple. By blending, I really mean that I'm putting lots of water on the border, on that border. I'm bringing it down, down here. I'm gonna let the water do its thing. And then I'm gonna go back and I'll go ahead and add my fuchsia. You're right, it's relaxing. Good, <laughs> good. 
it was intended that way so (laughs) (laughs) yeah i'm so curious as to how you're doing it i did the crayon and now i'm just using my watercolor brush and varying the intensity and the size there you go that's how you do it won't be as pretty as yours but it'll be different i bet it will it's got its own qualities though and it's motivating me to learn about the layering yeah yeah i am curious about that too i am tapping that color into these areas watching the magic happen all it takes is a little bit of color and the water will carry it away I'm even tapping on top of my complicated color here, my purple, because that's helping it to blend a little bit with the fuchsia, right, at that border there. Because I have a ton of water there, that's what's allowing me to to tap and, and mix the colors via the tapping. See, like that, I'm able to um, pinpoint where I want uh, some areas to be more concentrated with color. Um, I chose to keep the color to this side. And the water is allowing it to spread just a little bit. So I can keep on going. I can keep on adding more fuchsia. As I'm looking at this, I kind of want my fuchsia to trickle down here a little bit. So what I can do is add that water here to the border, allow these border colors to mix, mix and mingle with the water. And I can add more fuchsia on top. I think at this point, I'm just talking to myself and allowing you guys to do your own thing. So let me know if y'all have any other specific questions. Now that fuchsia mixes so nicely with both these colors. So where's all this extra water gonna go? It, it absorbs into the paper um, and it dries eventually. It, it evaporates eventually. Okay. Yeah, so it'll, it'll go away eventually. Um, those pools of, of color that you see here, um, the color will remain, but the water will, will evaporate. Okay, so I think I'm ready to move to the next color.
So I'm going to go ahead and start on another one. So I would, if you're finished, I would recommend just, you know, trying as much as you can to set it aside and you're welcome to start on another one, which is what I'm going to do. Um, if you can't move it, then I would perhaps take another piece of paper and just sort of fan it um, for a little bit, and at least until the big puddles won't move so much. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of water, obviously, so be very careful. But if I'm gonna do another one. It takes this out. What can I do besides spirals now? I know you mentioned diamonds, Brandy. I think I might want to do diamonds too. What if yeah, I did I diamonds with some spirals over and I did corkscrews and oh that's cute. A hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> it's been my Monday. I get it. <laughs> I don't know. Monday, just... but it's not really Monday because it's a holiday week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true went to urban air yesterday which if if you don't know what urban air is it's a an indoor playground urban um air. Cool. yeah for, for, children. for both so obviously i had to get a ticket for myself um <laughs> so i could jump around and basically it's it's like you have trampolines in certain spots you jump on giant trampolines and um what else this one had laser laser tag it had a zip line that like that was all the way around the entire um building what else did it have it had an indoor rock climbing area so obviously a lot of stuff but uh <laughs> I, I I forget sometimes that I have to slow down <laughs> and so now I'm feeling it I feel, I felt terrible this morning. So combine that with all of my uh, car troubles from earlier today. Oh, I miss you with car troubles. That stinks. Yeah. You weren't on yeah, the side, I, were you? No, no. It was just the, the check engine light came on. Um, and I do tend to freak out over anything having to do with my car. So <laughs> took it in and it was, it was good. Was, it was fine. I mean, it, you know, it's often it's something so simple. Well, I but had I gotten a tune-up. Um, I gotten a tune-up on Friday, and um, so they they did their thing, cost an arm and a leg with a, a few other things that needed to be done. But um, I'd heard, I'd read that cylinder problems can happen. Like one of the cylinders was misfiring, so. And apparently that's pretty common after tune-ups. Don't, don't, don't drive in the snow. You can't imagine yeah. people who are, or, you know, there's, there's emergency bands and driving bands and travel advisor all over the place. And people are driving and they're stuck. And so they have Ooh. to leave their car and then it gets towed. Uh, to some place like a mall somewhere, probably in the other in another section of town. <laughs> so people are still people are still finding their cars. Oh, oh wow! No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh geez, honestly, like I wouldn't even know how to survive <laughs> in an area. Yeah, that you know snowed. how you survive? You stay home. <laughs> yeah, you, exactly. You, you stay, stay home. home. You know, I thought about that when you said you had car trouble today, and I said, well, I'm sure glad yeah, I stayed yeah. in bed all day. You know, that was, it's just not a yeah. lot of trouble I can get into. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, there's my, I couldn't find my paintbrush for a second. I know, I'm just, I'm the kind of person, though, that just can't stay still. I just have... No, you have anxiety or something. There's something oh, going on. There's... We're high functioning anxiety people. We just keep moving. I never sit down. Yeah. 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 I I clean when I'm really anxious because oh, yeah. mm -hmm. can't sit down. Can't do that. Yep. Gives me more anxiety when I sit down. Yep. Gosh. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you understand. 
I mean, we're the kind of people you want around in a like emergency, or at least for me, but boy, that whole <laughs> sitting around thing is tough. Can't do it. It is. It makes me yeah. really worry when, when I'm forced to, I haven't really been, mm -hmm. forced to yet, but I do worry about that. When I was, yeah, when I was sick with pneumonia, I, I had to lay around, I had to sit down. Um, but I just, it took a lot for me to sit down and not very, not do very much. And I knew that I had to, like, I felt so much worse whenever I, I didn't sit down. So I had to, you know, I didn't have a choice, but it was tough. I got old with MS. It's not tough, but it, it kind of bugs me that I can just like sit and not move. Yeah, and that's like, that is something that's, you know, terrifying, you know, about MS. And so what I'm trying to do right now is just sort of absorb the idea and just put it in the back of my head that it's a possibility because I have MS, you know, could be bed, bed bound. Um, yeah, but you have, you someday, know, you're, but... Taking some, you're taking some med and you're young. Yeah. Yeah, it is true. I feel like the earlier I can, you know, just sort of like think about the idea as a possibility, the better I feel about it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I was just talking to my partner about this today about how like my mom had MS and there were no disease modifying drugs then. And she, you know, went downhill pretty quickly and obviously my course isn't that way but for a lot of reasons but I don't know I've, I've you know I think sometimes I think about trying how do you prepare for what you feel is inevitable although you don't know but like mm -hmm. it's like trying to prepare for someone that's going to die or something. like you just you think you're oh, like yeah. okay mm -hmm. I know this is going to happen but that doesn't I mean then it happens and you're just you know yeah like, strength yeah well I can tell you since I'm 71 and so it's moving very quickly for me since I got diagnosed. I got diagnosed about when Hannah got that. So whenever you say it, I'm always paying attention. Mm. But um, I'm just surprised how, as I keep losing stuff, um, it doesn't, I think I worry, I worry about it more than when it actually happens. And it just, it's still, it's kind of creepy and, you know, creepy, not creepy, like scary creepy. It just creeps up. And oh it, yeah yeah and i'm just surprised how much i'm okay about it because mm -hmm. i have fine other things like this i would never do this i would never be doing this yeah there's just things that i don't have to and i as i watch people around me trying to reclaim their life since covid and especially mm -hmm. my contemporaries because they're my age and they didn't come out of this you know the same way they're older and mm. uh, i'm just surprised how much I'm not suffering. I think I suffered more when I first got diagnosed. Like, oh my God. <gasps> I feel like a lot of it is you you learn to to accept what's going on, but also um, just live with what's going on and and uh, what was the word? I just had it in my head. I can't remember it anymore. You like more but, the moment, you know more what more i'm more in the moment yeah you know, i got oh, yeah. plans for today and i was like okay well you did get the paper white you just didn't go to the <laughs> store to pick it up they're gonna deliver it <laughs> well it's it's funny how like ms will make you more um at least for me more forgiving of myself because you know if i just if i drop something then oops i dropped something it's okay um stumble on something it's okay i fall it's okay like, and there have been moments where I, I fall and I, I, I do hurt myself, but like, but it's okay. And it's not a big deal. And pain is not a big deal anymore. Cause I feel like I've mm -hmm. gotten over my fear of needles now because <laughs> with all the, the blood draws and all the MRIs we have to give, it's, it's a lot. Right. Um, so I feel like there's a lot to be gained as well. Um, you just, you learn a lot from, from being sick and you learn, uh, how to compromise with your life and, 
how to compromise with other people, with your disease, because your body is just, you know, it's not the same anymore. So you kind of have to compromise, but that's not a bad thing. No, because most people don't do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Most people don't do that, you know, and you, you really can't be stubborn with this disease. You really, I guess I don't think so. You have, you to, have to learn to advocating for yourself that I'm very still. Yeah. Stubborn. But that's you know, very true. So I have a confession. Yesterday I went, I went to um, this meeting and then I was surprised I had enough energy. Like, no wonder I'm tired today. I went to Trader Joe's mm -hmm. and um, I picked up some blueberries and I decided I didn't want them. And I went back to where the blueberries are and I went to put them back in and they just spilled out all over the place. <laughs> and I was mm. like, oh, well. <laughs> I didn't even Sorry. feel embarrassed. I was like, okay, yeah, there's a lady with the walker and look what she did. <laughs> Love that. Get over it. I have to deal with this all the time at home, except with painting. <laughs> painting, I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, you just undo, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> she just undo. Long that the top wasn't on tight. That's all. Well, you know what? Yeah. Because okay, I'm like true confession. I tasted one, and then I wasn't sure I wanted one. And I tasted another one. It was rotten. And then I tasted another one, and then I forgot that I didn't close the lid. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> See, you just you laugh at yourself more. And it's like Trader Joe's, you know, like my local market. I'd feel bad because you know I have to see these people all the time. You know, the workers. <laughs> you know, if you would have eaten more, you wouldn't have made such a mess. <laughs> and I have to do that with. I just probably lost fifteen hundred dollars in my car. Yeah, I was at the grocery waiting for a, a handicap spot, and I wasn't looking, and I got banged into a yellow pole and i was like oh, no right oh, no. investments right <laughs> fortunately i bought my car pre-dented from an old lady who died <laughs> oh good it's already pre-dented pre -dented. i like that i like that <laughs> that phrasing it's pre-dented guys it's fine <laughs> Um, would anyone like to share their dryer pieces of work if it's dried by now? Now there's a lot of waiting around with this project. Um, if you happen to have access to a blow dryer, that would help too. Oh, I see Tony. Tony's ready. There we go. Wow, Tony oh. is it. Cool. I love it. Four different sections with these colors. Those are beautiful. I want to mix them up a little bit more. Well, I think a blow dryer, if you add more water, I feel like it'd make this whole crazy pattern thing. It would. Yeah. That's why you have to be careful with the, the blow drying. But if you hold it from afar, it shouldn't um, move it too much. Thank you, Tony. Beautiful. Anyone else? We can we can still wait though if you want. I can try. Um, but sure. I was, mine are like super wet, so I was gonna try with my um, holding my thing. So let's see how this goes. Oh, there we um, go. Oh, there's this one, and then yeah. I, let it, uh, I tried the water. All right, flower oh, thing. Hey, you did do that. I love that. Hmm. You did the flowers today. Oh yeah, just a second ago. Yeah. Oh, and then it was just uh, wow, like, a, nice. like uh, using those colors. Yeah, yeah. Super wet. I just tried to. I, th I think the paper just tore. <laughs> so wet to the table. Yeah, yeah. Definitely be careful with that. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. If we need more time, that is I okay. Could go. Yeah, Anna Marie. I'm gonna put you up here. I don't know if you could see that. There we go. Look at that. It's a it's a whole oh, wreath. Oh wow. Yes. A wreath. Uh-huh. So beautifully done. Hey. I'm loving that background too. Oh, that was just I painted gray there. I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> well, I feel like it it carries everything else though. It it really makes all the other colors stand out. That's what I love about it. 
Thanks. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you. Who else is next? Oh, I, I forgot to ask. My imperfect one. Yeah, yeah. And then I wanted to to ask anyone else if if they've done anything uh, creative this week. Got to ask that. Should I show you mine? And then I'm yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Considering that I can't layer or anything. Let's see. It's a little blurry, but I do see lots of colors. It actually looks more colorful on the screen, but yeah. Yeah. I like the spirals. I know. I love the spirals. It. I think those those dots that you created, um, they remind me of outdoor lights, like the, the outdoor string lights that you see sometimes. Oh, uh, you know, I colored them in and then I decided to... <sighs> erase because i can because <laughs> <laughs> you can yep yep can. It, yeah it's relaxing yeah but you did so well with that i love the the blending of of the transition from one color to the next color hmm. you did that really well oh. i have a creative project i could share yeah i'd love to love to see it so i made these out of um i painted old CDs. Hey. Uh, huh. Are they AOL CDs? <laughs> <laughs> They're just all kinds of old CDs and then I, I strung the beads on them. And I'm gonna hey. hang them on a tree in front of my house. Oh, that's yeah. cool. I love that. That's a good idea. Just hey, good idea. What kind of paint did you use? Um, I used acrylic paint and paint markers, and then I sprayed them with um, a sealer. Oh, yeah, wow. that's cool. Very cool. Yeah. And I put glitter on. I don't know if you could see the glitter, but they're... Yep. Yeah. And they don't take up much space, so that's nice. Yeah, that, that's another good thing. <laughs> and they're not easy to recycle, but you just did it. Hmm. Yeah. You did <laughs> Man, I love that. I might have to like get the kids to help me do something like that. All of yours, all of yours are like you have like definite color concentrates. I I don't know what I was doing, but <laughs> here we go. Mine's very oh. light. Oh. Like I blended it more. I I don't know. Yeah, what maybe maybe you you use more water, perhaps. Yeah, or maybe it's the, I, it, it's the paper, huh. maybe it's that mix. It's just a mixed media paper. Um, it could be know. the paint, I think. It, it, mm -hmm. I, we can't, we can see it. I can it see like the just, yeah, just Judy, it's yeah. intentional. Um, yeah, it's, you no, it's the glacial effect. effect. You have this old flat, yeah, of like watercolors, oh. probably about, I don't know, 30 years old. <laughs> and oh, I, I wonder whether it was still, still, you know, good. And actually, it is when you put water on it. I mean, but maybe that had a di difference in the way the, the paint lay. You know, like yeah, water or something. I don't know. So with those particular palettes, it's it's usually the. I have one right here. I have one that's very similar. It's usually those that that look round and they might look a little bit chalky sometimes it really helps if before you paint you put like get like a a, a dropper or something and drop a bunch of waters on it um basically it's like you're it's like you're you're pre-wetting your 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 paint so what you'll do is you'll either grab a dropper or you'll grab your your paints and just really soak it first beforehand and yeah. it'll it'll um, it'll soak through all the way to the bottom so that you can actually okay. use um, use the paints. Okay. Use uh, it, it'll mix better that way. Would anyone else like to share? I'll show you mine. Yeah, let me hold on. Uh, let me take Judy off Dry the screen. Enough. Dry enough now. Okay, got you. Oh, I love that purple you added everywhere. Oh, see, I don't like my my blended purple though, but you know, it's okay for next time. Oh, uh, okay, like that part down there. 
Yeah, I the, think one, I see. this one that I blended. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, mate, you know, it looks better when I show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a day, honestly. Um, <laughs> back and well, I like that it. that spot is more complicated, though. Like, it looks like you you blended something else with it. Um, I, I tried what you did. I tried the purple and the orange with that one. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love oh. that. I wonder if um, it, maybe it might help if you go back on top of it, um, maybe in the next minute or so, and just add more water, just plain water, and see if you can spread it. Okay. Um, if it becomes too dry, you depending on your brand of paint, you may or may not be able to move it, but um, you should be able to move it at least a little bit with more water. But other than that, I actually I do like it though. I did one more, but my resist didn't come out that good. So it's just like uh -huh. a blur. Hold on, I'm looking for you again. It looks very floral. No. It was trying to be floral, but the the white didn't really come through. Ah, I see. So the white. I think that if you were to, well, maybe not. I was going to suggest maybe adding more more water to some of those hard edges, but um, that looks more like a a a. a field of green or like a, a bush or something so maybe not um I don't know I like it so I think you did well <laughs> it's fun though I like this technique yeah, yeah. good all right y'all good night